Hey, what's going on? Luke here. For today's video, we're going to be talking about the retirement of Cameron Smith. It's finally been announced. For ages, we thought it was going to be announced. Although, I guess there was still a little bit of hope that he was going to play in 2021. Probably not the Melbourne Storm. They'd already come out and said that Harry Grant, Brandon Smith, they were going to be the hookers for the year. And that Cameron Smith even himself came out and said that he wasn't going to hold back Harry Grant. And Harry Grant came out and said that he was going to go to another club should Cameron Smith play. So, Cameron Smith said, I'm not going to hold back these guys. I will leave. I'll go play somewhere else or I'll retire. And that's exactly what he's done. He's come out and retired. It feels like it's been dragging on for a long time. I'll be honest, I was kind of getting a little bit sick of it. For a good couple of months after the grand final, I was like, yeah, let this guy sort of think about it, entertain some offers from some other clubs. But it kind of got to the point where he dragged on so long. Like even in terms of the announcement, it's the day before the NRL starting and he comes out and announces his retirement. Seems a little bit dodgy to be honest. And I think it supports all of the theories that everyone had that he was just dragging this on for publicity for his book. But in saying that though, he's deserved it. He's had a hell of a career. You could argue that he's the best player of all time. At least in my generation, like of me watching, he's definitely the best player. And I know there's always going to be arguments for guys like Darren Lockyer and Jonathan Thurston and that. But for me, Cameron Smith was easily the best. And as a person who only really truly started watching rugby league in about 2002-ish, I pretty much got to see the whole Cameron Smith career. So I know how good he is. And I was kind of in that age group where I was able to grow up watching him, able to see him go from a youngster to the veteran and even he got past that veteran stage. I mean, realistically, he should have retired ages ago in terms of age-wise. Um, you look at guys, they sort of get to their 30s and that's the back end of their career. Instead, he was still playing when he was 37. I think it's absolutely incredible. And the fact that not only was he playing at 37, but he's playing at a really, really high level. Now, he's always going to be a controversial figure. As good as what he was, there's always going to be a mixed opinion on him. For me, I respect him as a really, really good player. Obviously, accomplished a lot in the game. He's pretty much done everything in the game. Not pretty much. He definitely has done it and he's done it more than once. Um, the captain of Australia, Queen Queensland and Melbourne, a one club player that doesn't happen these days. Although funnily enough, Melbourne is a club that seems to be producing these one club players. I mean, you got Billy Slater, Cameron Smith, Cooper Crump was nearly a one club player um, apart from a couple of years. Um, but you got guys like the Bromwich boys coming through and there's probably a couple others who might stay one club players, maybe a Munster or something. Um, but yeah, Melbourne seems to be a team that produces a lot of loyalty despite being a relatively new team. And I think a lot of that is due to Cameron Smith, due to Craig Bellamy and due to that little trio, the big three. You had Cameron Smith as the leader, then you had Cooper Cooper Cronk and Billy Slater as your support acts. And bloody hell, what a good support act you've got. That big three literally set up Melbourne for 15 years. And because of that big three, they were able to guide through your Munsters and your Gareth Widdops and guys who took over from those guys. And even now, guys like Harry Grant, they were able to step into this team that was already established, already had a great foundation, and they were able to just come in and take off from where the previous ones left them. Now, I started talking about Karen Smith having mixed opinions. I gave my thoughts in terms of that. I do like him, but a lot of people really don't like him. First off, he's a Queenslander, so New South Wales fans, we've had to sit there and we had to watch Cameron Smith and all the rest of them, your Greg Inglises and that, absolutely destroy New South Wales year after year after year. And Cameron Smith was obviously the focal point of it. He was the captain as well as Darren Lockyer, but he was also the captain. And in my opinion, he was the best player. So he's going to get a lot of backlash from that. Melbourne's obviously been ridiculously successful too, even to this day, winning the premiership last year. He's literally gone out a grand final winner. And I think that says a lot about Cameron Smith and about Melbourne in general. But they've literally been an unstoppable force for the majority of his career. So he's been around for a long time. He's playing until he's 37. For the majority of that time, they were at least a premiership contender, if not winning the premiership. So after a while, you're kind of going to get sick of it and you're going to start getting people begrudging them just because of their success. I was probably one of them, to be honest. Also, we may as well talk about it now, talking about how good Melbourne were. But you can't talk about Karen Smith and Melbourne without talking about the salary cap incident. Now, the players have come out and said that they didn't know anything about it. Whether you believe that, it doesn't really matter. But it is what it is. They got the premiership stripped of them uh, from 2007 and 2009. Obviously, through that time period, they had those wins. They also lost to Broncos in 2006. And in 2008, they got beat by Manly, which funnily enough, Cameron Smith did not play that game. So I think that's a testament to how good Cameron Smith was. The fact that in the previous year, they beat Manly and they beat them pretty well. And then Cameron Smith doesn't play the next year. And they side relatively the same side. And they got absolutely towed up 40 nil. Now, I don't know if Cameron Smith would have made them win that game, but they definitely wouldn't have got beat 40 nil. But just in terms of the whole salary cap incident, I feel like it is going to tarnish his career because that whole start of the dynasty and even the actual dynasty itself, they had the big three. You could have argued that if the salary cap stuff hadn't happened, other teams would have come in. They would have been able to snoop a Billy Slater or Cooper Cronk. They wouldn't have stayed as loyal as what they were. And then because all of that stuff happened, then the players sort of got their backs up against the ball and they're like, nah, stuff them. We're staying at Melbourne. We're going to win those premierships. They got taken off us before. We're going to redeem ourselves. So you could argue if the salary cap incident didn't happen, maybe Cameron Smith would have been at the Broncos. Maybe there wouldn't have been this big dynasty 
dynasty because they never would have had all those players still there. But it is what it is. They're still there, and they went on to win a couple more premierships, actually more than a couple. What, you had 2012, you had 2017, and this final one in 2020. Now, we've had all these good players that have come through the Melbourne system, but the one person who's always in rain was Cameron Smith. And throughout all those premierships, it always feels like there was one person to drop off. You started off, you had Inglis, and they dropped off. And we said, oh, well, they're going to drop off now. Didn't happen. Cooper Cronk left. Did they drop off a little bit, but they were still winning premierships. Billy Slater, he was gone. They still won a premiership. But Cameron Smith, he was always there. He's not going to be there now. What does that mean for Melbourne? We're about to find out. They've got Harry Grant coming through. Arguably the best up-and-coming player in the whole game. We saw him already play for Queensland last year in pretty much his rookie season. I know he played a little bit for the Storm, but this was his first breakout season. And it was at a team like the West Tigers who aren't exactly good. So... We've seen Harry Grant can do it in a team like the Tigers, but it's big shoes to fill. Cameron Smith was not only the best player, but he was definitely the leader. He was someone who I would say the players would look at and go, like, oh, what do we do? And Cameron Smith would say, yep, let's just focus. Let's just, just knuckle down, just relax. And then the players would follow. Not having him there, I think it's going to have a big impact on the Storm. Do I think they're going to drop down drastically? I don't think so. They've still got enough good players to be a pretty solid side. But I can't see them being that super, super elite team this year. Give them a couple of years, maybe even one year, and I think they'll be back up there. But just for the time being, I think we're definitely going to see how much influence Cameron Smith had in that club because I think we're going to see the storm fall down a little bit. But overall, with Cameron Smith, what a fantastic player. I think he's definitely going to be talked about in immortal category. I would put him straight in there. I mean, obviously, they've got to have their criteria and wait their turn, but I think he'll definitely go into the immortals. And as controversial as he has been, while he's playing. I think now that he's retired, I feel like people look back on him favorably. Obviously, there'll be incidents that will always be talked about. Like I said, the salary cap incident, the whole Alex McKinnon thing where he was talking to the referees, even just talking to the referees in general, had a pretty good relationship with the referees. I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen a player able to sort of control the referees as much. You've seen some guys who are pretty good talkers, and as soon as they talk to the referees, referees just shut that shit down. Not with Cameron Smith, though. Gets his point across, and I feel like whatever team he was playing for at the time benefited greatly, whether it be Melbourne, Queensland, Australia, whoever it was, they benefit from it. And also, I just want to touch on something that I think a lot of people will probably gloss over, was the fact that as long as the career Cameron Smith had, he's had a pretty clean record. I mean, apart from the incidents on the field, obviously a few little chicken wings and a few dirty things like that. But in terms of off the field, there's not been too much. You know, there's a little bit of that sort of cheating scandal that never really eventuated into anything. There's been a little bit of talk as of late with the whole Cooper Cronk, Billy Slater incident, um, whether they're still talking to Cooper Cronk or whatever. But apart from that, there's not been any incidents of him drink driving or punching people or getting into trouble at parties or anything like that. He's been pretty much a clean skin. And as someone who is a captain of the side, that's exactly what you want. You want your players to be able to look up to someone and have them be setting the example. And he was setting the example for a long, long time. So it's a credit to Cameron Smith. Fantastic career, a very deserved retirement. And I'm not sure if he's going to end up in the media. It kind of seems weird for him to end up in the media considering the run-ins he had with the media the last couple of years. And it felt like they were bashing him a lot over the whole retirement situation. But yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's another one who ends up on Fox Sports or Channel 9 or something. But just have to wait and see. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Cameron Smith. I just wanted to keep it short and sweet. Didn't want to talk about anything in general because, I mean, if you're looking for stats and stuff, you can go on Wikipedia. There's probably going to be thousands of Instagram posts and Facebook posts. Probably going to be documentaries made about him. And he's just that high profile of a player and one of the best ever. So it's going to be plenty of people talking about him. So if you're looking for that sort of stuff, you came to the wrong place. But I'd love to know your opinions on Cameron Smith. I'm, like I said earlier, it's very mixed opinions on him. So I'm expecting people in the comments to either love him or hate him, but everyone's going to have an opinion on him. So definitely leave in the comment section below might be able to have a bit of a discussion but that's where i'm going to end this video if you did happen to enjoy it make sure you go ahead and smash the like button subscribe to the channel if you're new around here it's pretty important that you do do that it's pretty important that you do leave a like and subscribe because the NRL season is starting and in terms of growing my channel, the more likes and more subscribers I have, the more reach I'm going to have in terms of getting to other people and other people seeing it. So thank you very much if you've done it on this video and thank you very much for doing it on any of the other videos and subscribing if you've already done it. But I'm also going to ask if you can give me a follow on social media as well. It's on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke and YT for the most part. On Facebook, is just Mr. Luke. It was the only other one. But the rest of them, Mr. Luke and YT, Snapchat included. So go ahead, give me a follow, give me a like, give me an ad and that sort of stuff. But yeah, that's all i pretty much got to say about Cameron Smith. The NRL starts tomorrow. The timing of this was a little bit eh. I had other stuff to talk about, but Cameron Smith is just a topic you had to talk about. As soon as the retirement happened, I knew I had to make a video on this. So that's exactly what we've done. But the NRL kicks off tomorrow. Going to be doing a video about it tomorrow as well. Going to be giving my tips and predictions. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for more content on the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. See you.